In this video, we'll continue talking about the capacitor. But instead of just filling the capacitor from a battery and releasing it through a resistor and an LED, we have an Arduino that's creating a square wave on pin 13, and it's coming out, and it's going directly into the oscilloscope on the right. And it's also going into terminal 1 of a potentiometer. Now, if we turn the potentiometer, we'll see that the waveform on the left oscilloscope will be changed drastically. And that's because the resistor in this potentiometer plus the capacitor are filtering the waveform. So it's going from square wave to this shark tooth, sort of sawtooth waveform. And that's because the current is not able to flow instantaneously through the resistor. And the capacitor, which wants to fill up logarithmically, so it doesn't want to fill up instantaneously, it doesn't want to fill up at a constant rate, it wants to fill up fast at first and slower and slower as it reaches its peak, is inhibited by the resistance of the potentiometer. So if we were to bring this back down, we'd see we get closer and closer to a square wave again. We'll come back up again. The value of this potentiometer is 500 ohms. If I was to change the value of this potentiometer and let's say make it twice as strong, we'll have a stronger effect. Let's do that. I'll stop the simulation, click on the potentiometer, change this from 500 to 1 kilo ohm, which is 1000 ohms, and start the simulation again. First thing I'm going to do is turn off auto scale so we can stretch this waveform to the top. Okay, so now when we turn this potentiometer, we'll have the same effect, but only halfway turned. And as we go further, we'll see that the capacitor is no longer able to charge up all the way, and it's no longer able to discharge completely. So it doesn't have enough time because the resistor is limiting the current flow and not letting the voltage of the capacitor rise all the way, and it's not letting it fall all the way. So that's the basic version of this. We're going to go to what may be a familiar circuit and look at the effect of frequency or period and duty cycle. So let's start the simulation. And here we have duty cycle, and let's turn this up to 50%. And on the left, we have frequency. Let's turn this up a little bit faster. And let's turn auto scale off on each one of these. And here we have the smaller ceramic version of the capacitor. But it's a very similar circuit. The output of pin 13 goes to an oscilloscope, and it goes to a potentiometer whose wiper is connected to a capacitor, and the other side of the capacitor is connected to ground. And then we're reading the voltage on the high side of the capacitor. Let's change this. We'll start to filter the waveform. And now it's not able to rise or fall completely. Let's max this out. Now let's see what happens when we start to change frequency. So let's make a higher frequency. So now the potentiometer is really limiting the capacitor, and it's only able to bounce between a small range. Let's bring this back up slow it down. Now let's vary duty cycle. Remember duty cycle is how much it's on versus how much it's off. So now we're turning it down so it's only on about 10% of the time. Let's keep bringing it down and you'll see that the capacitor is able to rise very quickly at first but then it's cut off and it's not getting any more current and what will happen is its voltage will slowly drop down to zero. And we can go the other way, and as we increase the duty cycle, we see the capacitor gets closer and closer to the top, but it will never quite make it to its highest voltage. And now that we're past 50%, you see that the capacitor is never able to get all the way back down. In fact, it doesn't get anywhere near back down to zero volts. And now we're at 99% duty cycle. So this is a great way to filter a waveform that's coming from something that's oscillating. So instead of just taking an average voltage 
and hoping that it's clean enough for whatever your input or your sensor is. If you put a capacitor across the input and the other side to ground, you can do some really interesting filtering. So there you have the basics of filtering with a resistor and a capacitor. You can find the URLs for this circuit and the previous circuit in the description of this video. Go ahead, try it for yourself in 1-2-3D circuits.